Hello, everyone. Uh, I encountered a uh, video on YouTube a while back. It claimed to be the hardest differentiation problem on YouTube. And I think that might be oversold just a little bit, but it's not an easy problem. Now, uh, basically, uh, the problem was presented at, basically it was just presented as d by dx with this. I've given it the name y simply for uh, clarity. Now, what we've got here is we've got a complex fraction uh, and all of the, oh, that's raised to the 10th power. Uh, on the numerator, we've got a, a two uh, uh, non-straightforward uh, functions, uh, a quotient raised to the 1 tenth power, so the 10th root. And on the denominator, we've also got a quotient that's raised to the 10th power. And again, those functions are not quite uh, you know, basic. Uh, so if we were to just start and dive right in, first we had apply the power rule to the whole thing, so 10 times this whole thing to the ninth power, and then, uh, and then we would have to do the chain rule, which is to differentiate the thing inside, and that would be a quotient rule, uh, which would, would then require differentiating both the top and the bottom. Uh, and when we did that, we'd have to apply the power rule to both of those, followed by the chain rule to both of them, and then for each of those, we'd have a quotient rule, and then the quotient rule would then have to apply the chain rule again, and we'd have a product rule on the denominator of the top, and a uh, chain rule uh, application on the denominator of the bottom one. And by the time you're done writing all of this out, you end up with a fraction slightly larger than Siberia, uh, probably with 10 or 20 errors in it, because you end up writing out all of this stuff so many times. But uh, if you observe, you can apply this to here. And that gets rid of uh, a, a chain rule application. And then you can apply the powers here into here and into here. And then you can then multiply, when you're done that, by the reciprocal of the bottom. And you'll end up with a much simpler result. So let's actually apply that tenth power. So that means that y is equal to 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x. The 10 and the 1 tenth cancel on the top there. So it's x times 10 to the x. That's all going to be over 10 minus 10x over 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 and this is going to be to the 100 power so now we've got rid of one chain rule and one power rule by doing that well two power rules uh, now if we apply this for this in here we're going to have on the top 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x over x times 10 to the x. That's all going to be over 10 minus 10x to the 100 over 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10, and that's also to the 100. Now, you can flip this and multiply. So that gives us 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x times, now the denominator here comes up on the numerator. So it's 10 to the 10x plus 10 
minus 10 to the 100 power and that's going to be all over our original x times 10 to the x and that's going to be times the original numerator here which is 10 minus 10x to the 100 power. Now, you can see that we brought this down to a single quotient rule application. So by doing this algebra first, uh, we have uh, removed some stacks in the uh, fractions in the answer. So that gives us a single quotient rule application. And then, of course, we have to uh, uh, apply the product rule on the top and the bottom, and there's a little bit of chain rule involved. But it's a lot simpler than the original problem appeared to be. Uh, so this is something, if you encounter this problem on a test, uh, it means that your uh, teacher is a sadist because this takes a bloody long time to work out. Um, if they're just looking for the first step, uh, just apply all of the, uh, the rules, the calculus step, then maybe it's not so bad, but make sure they gave you a, a sheet of paper the size of the classroom, okay? It's not exactly pleasant. Now, we could just go ahead and uh, do all of do this, but it's going to involve copying stuff out a lot. What I'm going to do so I can keep track of what's going on, and you'll see why as this progresses, I am going to do some substitutions. I'm going to, and I'm not doing this because you have to. I'm doing this so I can keep track of what I'm doing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, substitute, I'm just going to call 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x a. So we'll let a equal 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x. And we'll let b equal uh, 10 to the 10 x plus 10 minus 10. And we'll do a sim similar thing on the bottom, so we have a single product on the bottom. We'll call C uh, we'll call that x times 10 to the x and we'll call D 10 minus 10x. Now, we're going to end up differentiating these eventually, so I'll just work out those derivatives now. So dA by dx is, this is the product rule, so the 10 stays, so we get 100x to the 9th plus, and the 10 stays again, and e to the x is its own derivative. Uh, we also want db dx, which is going to be equal to. Now we can ignore the minus 10, the derivative of that is zero. The derivative of a power of an ex exponential is the natural log of the base, which in this case is 10, so that's the natural log of 10 times the original uh, function, which is 10 to the 10x plus 10. And now, because we have a function in the power, we have to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of 10x plus 10 is 10. Now, observe that we've got 10 as the base, and we're multiplying by 10. That adds 1 to the power. And that means that that is equal to the natural log of 10 times 10 to the 10x plus 11. So now we don't have to carry that factor of 10 about. Now, we need to also differentiate c, so dc by dx, and that's equal to, now this is a power rule, so we need to need the derivative of the first times the second. 
So derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and the second term is 10 to the x. And we're going to add that to the first term times the derivative of the second, which is 10 to the x. So that's natural log of 10 times 10 to the x. Now, this last one is trivial. Uh, dd dx is just equal to minus 10. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our first round of substitutions. And this gives us so that will give us uh, y equals uh, so if we uh, make sure we compare here 10x to the 10 plus 10e e to the x is a uh, and uh, 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 is b, and that's to the 100th power. That's b to the 100 over, and then x times 10 to the x is c, and then d is 10 minus 10x, so that's d to the 100th power. I'm going to do one more bit of substitution here, just so I can keep my head straight. So we're going to let E equal A times B to the 100. And we're going to let F equal C times D to the 100. Now, we're going to need the derivatives of these as well. So DE by DX is. Now a and b are functions, remember. So this is the product rule. So we have derivative of the first term, so dA by dx times the second term, b to the 100, plus the first term times the derivative of the second term, which is 100 times b to the 99, and we have to do the chain rule here, so it's db dx. Okay. Um, now, uh, we'll I'll, I'll rewrite that uh, a little bit here. So that's dA by dx times b to the 100 plus 10 squared times a times b to the 99 times db dx. Now, the reason I wrote 10, 100 as 10 squared is we've got a whole bunch of 10 base exponentials. So uh, later on, that will combine more easily. Now, uh, df dx is exactly the same sort of thing. We're going to have dc dx times d to the 100 plus c times 100 times d to the 99 times dd dx, which is going to be dc dx times d to the 100 plus 10 squared times c times d to the 99 times d d dx. Uh, now, uh, that tells us that now we have y is equal to e over f. That means that dy dx is equal to, and this is just the quotient rule, is DE by DX times F minus E times DF by DX over F squared, right? 
And that will turn into, when we substitute back for uh, E and F, we have DE by DX is this business. So we have DA by DX times B to the 100 plus 10 squared times A times B to the 99 times uh, 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 DB DX, right? Uh, and that is all times F, which is C times D to the 100, and we have to subtract E, which is A times B to the 100, times DF DX, which is DC DX times D to the 100, plus 10 squared times C times D to the 99 times DD, dx. And this is all over f squared, so that's uh, c times d to the 100 squared. Now, I'm going to do some uh, simplification on that. So I'm going to distribute these out. So that's going to give me, and I'm going to put the derivatives, uh, the uh, unwritten, unsubstituted uh, derivatives at the back of the uh, terms uh, for now. Uh, so, this first term, when we multiply it out, is going to be C times B to the 100 times D to the 100 times DA DX. And that's going to be plus uh, 10 squared times A times B to the 99 times D to the 100 times C times DB DX. And that's going to be over. I, and I can you can split the fraction here um, if you want. Uh, I'll do that in the next step. C squared times D to the 200. Um, now I'm going to also uh, multiply out uh, this side. So that's minus a times b to the 100 times d to the 100 times dc dx and uh, also the negative distributes out so it's going to be minus uh, 10 squared times a times b to the 100 times c times d to the 99 times dd dx and this is all over the same denominator. Now, you can see here that uh, we can do some simpl simplifications at each, we can split on each of the addition and subtraction here. So the first term, we got a c on the top and a c squared on the bottom. We got a d to the 100 on the top and a d to the 200 on the bottom. So the c goes away and the d to the 100 goes away. So we have b to the 100 times da dx over I suppose this could actually be written as equals. Uh, as so as can this, as can this. Uh, over, and now we've got one C left and, one, and 100 Ds. Okay. Plus, now we've got 10 squared still. 
Uh, we don't have any A's on the bottom times A. We don't have any B's on the bottom, B to the 99. Uh, we have a C here, and we have a C squared on the bottom, so the C goes away and the D to the 100 goes away. Um, so that gives us, so we have an A, a B to the 99, and the DD, or the DBDX. So that's DB, DX, and this is also over C times D to the 100. Uh, let me check my uh, 10 squared, A, B to the 99, yeah. Now we subtract. Uh, the A doesn't go away. There's no B's on the bottom. There's D's on the bottom. We got D to the 100, D to the 200 on the bottom. So the D to the 100 goes away. So it's DC, DX over. Now we didn't have any C's on top. So we keep the C squared times D to the 100. And minus 10 squared times A times B to the 100 and C cancels and the D's cancel times D D by DX and what we're left on the bottom is 1C and 101 D's now we're well on our way here. Now we need to substitute back for the A's and B's and then we'll be mostly at our answer. Uh, now but this is the reason I did the substitutions in the first place. Uh, by doing that it allowed me to do some uh, algebra on it without having to write that stuff out uh, several dozen times. Uh, now we need to substitute back though, so that is equal to, uh, now I've got these things on another page here so I don't have to scroll this sheet back. Uh, so we need to substitute in uh, so here we've got B to the 100, which is, okay, B is uh, 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10, and that's to the 100 power times, now DA DX, which is, 100 x to the 9 plus 10 e to the x. Okay. And that's going to be over c, which is x times 10 to the x, x times 10 to the x times d to the 100, d being 10 minus 10x. So 10 minus 10x to the 100th power. Plus, um, okay, again we got 10 squared times a, which is 10x to the 10, plus 10 e to the x times b which is 10 to the 10 x plus 10 minus 10 and that's going to be to the 99th power times the derivative of b which is uh, what did I call it here uh, yes, okay. The derivative of b, which is the natural log of 10 times 
10 to the 10x plus 11. Okay. And now you can see why I wrote the, ten, the 100 as 10 squared. And that's going to be over uh, C, which is still x times 10 to the x, and D, which is still 10 minus 10x, and that's still going to be to the 100 power. Now, this doesn't all fit on one line, so we'll go on minus. Now we need A, which is... Uh, what is A? I, so A is 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x uh, and then B to the 100. So B, which is 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 and that's to the 100 power. And then the derivative of C, which is, remember, that's this, uh, this complicated thing. So it's uh, derivative of C, 10 to the x plus x times log 10 times 10 to the x. And that's over c squared, which is x times 10 to the x squared times d to the 100. And d is still 10 minus 10x. And that's to the 100 power. Now, we've got one more uh, to fill in. And that is, we've got to subtract it. Uh, we got 10 squared times A, which is uh, 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x, uh, and b to the 100. b is 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 to the 100 power times the derivative of d. The derivative of d is minus 10. Okay, and that is over C, which is x, uh, C is x times 10 to the x, and D is still 10 minus 10x to the 101 power. Now, now we've got everything back in terms of x. Now, a couple of things to observe. Uh, we have a sum here, which we can then split if we distribute everything. Uh, we also have some uh, powers of 10 here that can combine. So what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to uh, rewrite everything, uh, ultimately, so that uh, the powers of 10 are all on the numerator line. Uh, I'm going to, you know, observe here, there's a 10 to the x that can be factored out of this sum. And then I'm going to split this term. Uh, but first, let's do the uh, various uh, bits here. Um, so this first term here, uh, if we put the uh, 10 to the x 
upon the top becomes 10 to the minus x. Uh, these two, we'll put this term, this factor first. So that's times 100 x to the 9 plus 10 e to the x and then times 10 to the 10 x plus 10 minus 10 to the 100th power and that's going to be over and because the 10 to the x has gone to the top x times 10 minus 10 x to the 100th power and that term is basically in its final state. Uh, now this ter next term, we have 10 to the 10x plus 11, and we have 10 squared. The two can add, so that becomes 10x plus 13. And we have a minus x here from the 10x on the bottom. So we can subtract an x, so 10 to the 9x plus 11 or plus 13. Uh, so that then becomes 10 to the 9x plus 13. Uh, and we still have the natural log of 10. And then we have these other terms here which don't simplify. Uh, we could factor a 10 out of here, uh, and then it becomes, uh, you know, 10 to the 9x plus 14, but that doesn't buy us anything. Uh, so then we get 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x, and then 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 to the uh, 99th power. And this is over x. The 10 to the x has moved to the top times 10 minus 10x to the 100th power. Now, this next term is the one that we're going to split. Now we can factor a 10 to the x out here. And note that we have an x squared and a 10 to the 2x when we square that. So uh, we have 10 to the x, which will go away because this will then become 10 to the minus x. Um, so we're let's look at the at splitting this too. When we factor out the 10 to the x, we get 1 plus x times the natural log of 10. Uh, so that means that uh, we're going to have this business here uh, and then this business times the natural log of 10 times x. Okay. So the first one, uh, we factor out the 10 to the x. Uh, and we're going to have a 10 to the 2x on the bottom, so that gives us 10 to the minus x. So we'll have a 10 to the minus x on the top, and then we've got, we're, we're multiplying out the first term, which is 1, so it's 1 times the rest of the numerator, which is uh, 10 x to the 10 plus 10 e to the x times 10 to the 10 x plus 10 minus 10 uh, to the 100 power and that's over and uh, we've got an x squared on the bottom x squared 
and the 10 to the 2x is moved to the top, subtract and, and, and cancelled around with the 10 to the x on the top, and then that's times 10 minus 10x to the 100 power. Now, the second part of this sum, we have a minus sign, so that distributes in, so this term is going to be subtracted. Now, uh, we have the 10 to the x still factors out, and uh, the 10 to the x uh, still disappears with the uh, 10 to the 2x on the bottom, so we have 10 to the minus x still. Uh, we've got a natural log of 10. The x will cancel with one of the x's on the bottom. So then we've got the natural log of 10. Uh, and now the rest of this business here. Which, which is 10x to the 10 plus 10e to the x times... 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 to the 100 power. And this is all going to be over uh, just 1x now. x times 10 minus 10x to the 100 power. Now, we're on to the final term. We've got a minus 10 here, and we're subtracting, so that's going to become a plus. Now we've got 10 squared times 10, which is 10 cubed. We've got a 10 to the x on the bottom, which is 10 to the minus x. So we can combine those, and that gives us 10 to the 3 minus x power, okay? Uh, for that for the first bit there and then the rest of this doesn't change times 10 x to the 10 plus 10 e to the x times 10 to the 10 X plus 10 minus 10 and that is to the 100th power and that's all over X times 10 minus 10 X to the 101st power. Now this here is everything. We are done. This is, in fact, the answer. And if you check it in Wolfram Alpha, you will get the same answer, but the terms will be in a slightly different order. So let's just say this is... We'll just complete this. We'll put dy dx here. And we'll just box it. because, you know, boxing answers is kind of cool. So this is, in fact, the answer. I am, however, not going to integrate it to prove that it works. Uh, <laughs> integrating that would be absolutely horrible. It's certainly integrable, integratable, because we just arrived at it from a uh, source. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the answer uh, as, uh, as it's shown in Wolfram Alpha, and I have to assume that that is right, uh, especially since uh, the same, this sequence of work has arrived at it. Uh, but I wouldn't say that this is necessarily the hardest differentiation problem on YouTube. 
Uh, no doubt there are substantially harder ones uh, out there. Uh, and that's simply because the actual problem did not need to be done in as many of the complicated steps as the original presenter uh, put in front of us. Uh, is the fact that you could apply the two powers, or the, the two, yeah, the two powers at the start, and then multiply by the reciprocal and eliminate two quotient rule applications makes this a lot easier to process. Now, I use that sub, the substitution business with the uh, extra uh, functions there, uh, and that was just so that I could keep my head around things. Uh, it could be done without doing that, but uh, then you end up copying out all of this 10x to the 10 plus 10 e to the x type business many more times, and there's a lot more possibility for error if you do it that way. So anytime you're faced with something this complex, you feel you should feel free to uh, uh, to uh, I should actually uh, make finish the box here. Uh, you should feel free to go ahead and. Uh, and uh, you know, break it down. Uh, it, you know, you can substitute pieces, uh, and then work on simpler uh, problems. So, for the bits of the differentiation, I basically broke it down to here, here to the pieces that I needed to differentiate uh, at the base level, uh, and then. Uh, the second set of substitutions uh, basically let me write out the product rule uh, business for the two of them uh, and also apply the chain rule to the uh, power there, powers there. And then uh, it allowed me to keep track of what I was doing. Uh, so it allowed me to do these differentiation problems more simply. And then uh, by having the the C, the A B C D uh, uh, representations, I was able to simplify a lot of this without having to copy everything out many times and making transcription errors. And then, as you can see, there's a couple of steps here. Now, I could have written out some more detailed steps on doing the algebra. Uh, but as you can see, this thing is complicated enough that it doesn't really, uh, it's not terribly helpful. Uh, if you aren't sure that I've done the algebra right, you can take each term and uh, work it through yourself, uh, step by step, uh, doing everything that, that, that I did. Uh, now, Combining the powers of 10 like that actually makes the thing a little bit simpler to read. Uh, it, it gives you slightly fewer uh, factors in some of the uh, circumstances, so uh, that's, uh, that's probably why uh, Wolfram Alpha does that. Uh, the reason I did it here is uh, so you can actually compare the result with Wolfram Alpha and see that it actually comes up with the, the same result. And you can see how, uh, one way to get there. Anyway, uh, this is, uh, I guess, the end of this problem. Uh, if, uh, if anybody has uh, other math problems like this, they they want me to try and work out uh, on a video, let me know in the comments or, uh, or find some other way to, to ping me uh, and I can uh, give it a shot. Uh, just uh, to, to be clear, I don't have a PhD in math, I'm not a practicing mathematician or any, anything like that, so uh, I could easily make uh, monumental screw-ups. But, uh, for things like this, uh, you know, doing the, this type of working out, uh, it's something 
pretty much anybody can do, as you can see, there is nothing hugely complicated here. Uh, you had your basic rules of differentiation. Uh, I had to look up how to how to get the derivative of 10 to the x, uh, but hey, I don't do this all the time, so there you go. Anyway, uh, that's all for this problem. Uh, as I said, if you want to want me to try working something else out, uh, let me know. Uh, if you like this this video, leave it a like. If you didn't like it, leave it a dislike. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. It lets me know that you liked or disliked the video, even if it doesn't do anything else. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, then uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, because obviously notifications are needed so you get notified. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.